Hey everyone, this is Slyman. In today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the Celestron StarSense Explorer DX. Now this is the 130mm Newtonian model. Uh, Celestron does have a couple of other models that they've introduced. Um, and Celestron sent this to me with the specific purpose in mind of having an independent voice review it and test it out. Uh, and you know me and my channel, I've always been independent and always will, so I uh, thought that'd be a, a fun little project to do. Um, this telescope, in my opinion, is designed for beginners, and you know that's not a bad thing at all to get new people into the hobby and, and get them learning the night sky if that's what they want to do. Um, but it's also, I mean, pretty handy for the casual observer too. If you want to be outside observing in like five minutes or less, uh, this is really an easy way to go. So I've been able to spend the past few weeks um, with this telescope and this new system, really kind of evaluate it. So today's review, hopefully it's not too long, um, but I'm going to, to go in depth on the uh, StarSense Explorer and um, see how it does. So to start this review off, I wanted to talk about, you know, why am I making a review of a beginner's telescope? It's, you know, it's something I normally wouldn't do, right? Well, to be quite honest, I'm really intrigued by this whole thing um, because this telescope uses plate solving technology. And plate solving is, I would say, an advanced um, technique for astrophotographers and for people that, you know, do kind of the higher level astronomy of aligning your telescope. So essentially what plate solving is, is plate solving uses uh, a camera, essentially, to take a picture of the night sky. And it feeds that picture into software of some sort, like planetarium software. And that software is responsible for reading where each of those stars are. And then it bases, it looks at its, you know, its database and says, okay, we know exactly which stars these are. We know where the telescope is pointing. And so that can be kind of a complicated process. And what's really intriguing about this telescope is how simple they made it in literally in under five minutes, under two minutes, you can be outside observing. So basically what it's doing is replacing the, um, the camera and your laptop essentially when you're plate solving and it's replacing it with your cell phone and it's using the processing power of your cell phone as well to accomplish the plate solve. So how does this work? Well there is a mirror under this cover that you will see shortly and basically your, tel your, uh, your cell phone takes a picture of the night sky and the mirror and your telescope are on the same axis and your uh, cell phone in the Celestron StarSense Explorer app processes that image that you took and basically tells the telescope or tells the phone where it's located. And so if you wanna, once you're aligned, which is really easy, once your plate's solved, uh, you wanna go look in an object, it will give you coordinates and you just push the, the telescope over there and um, it's pretty much that simple. You have fine, fine motion controls. But yeah, this is what really intrigued me about the design is Celestron found a way to engineer it into something so simple that you just follow a couple instructions on your smartphone and it does it for you. The other big advantage with plate solving is that on a normal computerized mount, when you, you know, align it, you're uh, putting in your date, your time, your location, and once it's aligned, you really can't move it because that database is built in the hand controller or in the telescope's brain essentially. With plate solving or with this setup, you can pick up your uh, mount, your telescope here, move it, and the app will you know, take another picture, it will reconfigure itself, and you're good to go. You can move it 100 yards down the road if you wanted to. Okay, so let's uh, take a look at the actual smartphone carrier itself and the mirror assembly and how it works. So one thing I really like that Celestron did is this is rubber. They could have easily made this plastic on like a, you know, a beginning type telescope, but this is rubber. So if you're, you know, not using a case on your smartphone or something, um, you're not going to, uh, to ding it up. So that's kind of, kind of nice. Uh, the other thing is it has a nice little handle so you can easily uh, set that in. But before we do, we are going to take the mirror cover off. This is essentially how that works. So with the mirror assembly here, as I put my cell phone in the cradle, You'll notice you guys are getting a view of my kitchen ceiling. It's reflecting off the mirror right into my, um, my camera. And as I said, this mirror and the telescope axis are essentially one and the same. Uh, and then you have fine controls on the back. So what you wanna do 
is you want to adjust this to get as much of your field of view open as possible. And then what the app will do is essentially it's gonna take a picture through there, plate solve it, and you're aligned. Moving the telescope literally cannot be any easier. All you do is grasp the arm, hold everything down, and move it. So this is your left and right movement or an adjustment in uh, azimuth. And then up and down is altitude. So yeah, pretty easy. Now once you're getting close to your object, that's where you use the slow motion controls. So this one adjusts left and right or adjusts your azimuth. And then this one adjusts up and down for your altitude. And that way you can track an object as it moves through the sky if you're viewing it for a little bit. Or if you're approaching an object, you can get it nice and centered in your field of view. As I mentioned earlier, this thing is incredibly lightweight, so much so that I can easily pick it up and lift it above my head. So you can easily walk around you know, your yard, move it around, you know, really take it wherever you need and uh, be ready to go. So that's just another plus for the StarSense Explorer. So I briefly want to talk about the eyepieces that come with this telescope. So it does come with a 25 millimeter eyepiece and a 10 millimeter eyepiece. Now this telescope is a 650 millimeter focal length telescope, meaning that this um, 25 millimeter eyepiece is going to give you 26 magnification power, and this 10 millimeter is going to give you 65 magnification power. Now are, are these eyepieces any good? They're okay. On beginner telescopes, you're definitely not paying for the eyepieces. These are just kind of thrown in and included. And that's kind of the case with any beginner telescope. So the eyepieces are just all right. What you're really paying for is the telescope. So the telescope itself is great. The eyepieces themselves, I mean, for the average beginner, they're going to be fine. Uh, if you want a little bit more performance, you certainly could upgrade them. I mean, they are plastic and they are pretty finicky, but they work. So. I think that's kind of to be expected with a beginner scope. Now what's cool about the 130 millimeter Newtonian is it does include a 2 inch adapter. So if you do want to put 2 inch eyepieces in the telescope, you can. They are a little bit heavy on this, on this mount, but they will work. So yeah, you can do that too. Really, I mean, what I'm just trying to say is you're paying for the telescope. The telescope works great. If you want to upgrade your eyepieces in the long run, if you really enjoy using the scope, you certainly can do that. Something else to note. The one and a quarter inch adapter on Celestron Newtonians, if you unscrew it, you expose T-threads. So what's really neat is if you have a DSLR with a T-ring on it, you can attach your camera right to these uh, T-threads and then stick that in the focuser and lock it down. I wasn't able to get focus with either of my DSLRs though in the five inch Newtonian. In Celestron six inch Newtonian and eight inch Newtonian, I am, am, I am able to get focus but not in the five inch. So, I mean, if you want to, to try it out, you certainly can. If you wanna you know, show your friends on what's on the screen or what's on your DSLR, you can do that. But I was not able to get focus with mine. So before I start observing, I wanted to give you a little introduction to this app. Um, it's a, very similar to the Celestron Sky Portal app. So the official title, I believe, is Celestron Star Sense Explorer. Um, but it's basically a planetarium with lots of information in it. So if you're a new observer, it's pretty neat. So let's uh, check this out. All right, so here is the app and a quick little tutorial on it. Uh, if you're familiar with the Celestron Sky Portal uh, app, the functionality is fairly similar, so you shouldn't have a big learning curve. But what I like most is it, it points out all the objects that you know, would be good to view uh, for your you know, time. So if you, you know, zoom in on things, you can find things relatively easily. Um, and then also this star at the bottom, if you tap on that, it will bring up a list of this evening's best objects, which is really handy. Uh, even for expert astronomers, this list can uh, come in handy. So uh, what's also neat is, you know, let's say just tap on the Pleiades here, M45. It's gonna give me a description, uh, a nice picture. Uh, at the top left, there's a Celestron audio button. So if you want to be read too, <laughs> uh, you can tap on that. Um, by swiping over, uh, you get more information and you can get even more data on it. So that's, uh, that's pretty neat. And then if you hit center, it will center that object in the app. Um, the menu has a night vision uh, button on it. So if you tap on that, you'll get a night vision view to preserve your eyes. Uh, it's not a true night vision, but it does a pretty good job. 
a true night vision is where you would actually take like a red piece of film and put it over your phone or your screen. Uh, but this one does a pretty good job. So I'll just take that off now. And then it's just really important to remember to unlock your um, telescope when you get it. So you'll have a little um, postcard basically that's included that has a code. And so you just type that in. Then you see at the bottom, the star sense logo is flashing at me saying, Hey, let's get you a, let's get you a line. So you just tap on that hit needs alignment and uh, start from there. All right, so we're out here with the Celestron StarSense Explorer DX. We're all connected to the app. So there's a few things I wanna do. Um, obviously, I want to run it like normal and show you that, but I also want to test Celestron's claim that you don't need Wi-Fi or data to use this app. Um, and based on how it works, theoretically that should be true, but I wanna try that out anyway. And then I also wanna pick up the telescope and move it and see you know, how quickly it realigns to the sky. So um, let's go ahead and, and jump into the alignment. So the first step is just to tap the star sense button and it needs alignment. And it's going to ask you to center the camera over the mirror, which we've already done. So I'm gonna hit next. And then it's gonna give you a crosshair. And what you wanna do is you wanna center a star in the telescope and then once it's centered, drag your finger moving the crosshair over that star and then hit done. So I'm going to actually do that with uh, Procyon. So I'm going to move over there right now. And then I'm going to use the fine motion controls. Okay, so Procyon is centered here, so I'm going to center it on the phone now. And tap done. Okay, telescope position found. Follow the location to find your object. So right now I'm on Venus. I'm actually gonna move that. Let's find some. Well, I guess we can we can try and shoot for that. Let's start to go over here. Perfect, right in the eyepiece, bright as ever. <laughs> That's pretty awesome. Okay, so obviously my screen recording software and the StarSense Explorer app didn't work so well with my older phone, so I'm actually just gonna um, do it without the screen recording app and show it to you with my main camera. Okay, so we're gonna tap the flashing StarSense button at the bottom here and tap needs alignment center camera over mirror and make sure night mode is checked. Okay, so you can see Orion here. I'm gonna hit next. And now what I need to do is center a star um, in the telescope. So I'm actually going to pick, uh, let's go with uh, Betelgeuse since it's been in the news lately. <laughs> so I'm going to move up to Be Betelgeuse. Okay, and I'm gonna use the slow motion controls to center that. All right, so now that that's centered, I'm going to zoom in these crosshairs and get right over Betelgeuse. Okay, now hit done. Hit okay. Finding telescope position. Bam, there we go. So we're right on Betelgeuse now. So now this, uh, this app basically becomes a planetarium where you can start selecting objects and move right over the, to them. So if I hit Orion Nebula, I can just go right on down to it. And my iPhone SE is a little bit slow and I'm a little bit too fast. So I have to wait for it to take another picture of the sky. Okay, so I'm right on the Orion Nebula. Let me check it out. Yep, right in the eyepiece. Beautiful as ever. Actually pretty good contrast for a for a five inch reflector. Beautiful, okay. So as I was uh, saying earlier, I was showing you the Pleiades, which is a personal favorite. So let's go over to that. So I'll hit locate here. Go over here. Get it nice and locked in. Let it 
take another picture of the sky, plate solve that. Okay. All right. So Pleiades is in the center. Let's see. Yep, right in the center. Love the Pleiades. I actually really like the Hyades too. The Hyades. So if I scroll out here and tap on that, I'll just scroll right over to it. So you can see just how easy this app is and how great it is for beginners to learn the night sky and what can be what can be viewed. I'm not gonna lie, I think this is pretty game-changing technology for a beginner telescope. All right, so I mentioned that I wanted to try this on airplane mode without a cell signal and without Wi-Fi. So let's put it on airplane mode and uh, let's move it. So right now we're on the Orion Nebula. Let's uh, go to Bellatrix. Let's just move up there real quick. And it should uh, take a image of the sky and realign itself. Yep, there we go. Right in the center, awesome. So yeah, you do not need a cell signal to use this. So the last test I wanna do is to see how fast the phone realigns the telescope when you pick it up and move it. So right now we are centered on Aldebaran. So let's pick the telescope up, move it, move back down to Aldebaran and check that out, it's pretty much instantaneous, under three seconds. <laughs> that is awesome. So you know, if you're out camping with your friends and a tree is blocking an object, you can just pick up the telescope and move it and you are good to go. All of this while you are on airplane mode too. So yeah, that is really, really cool. So I've been making this review for six weeks now. If you can't tell, I've gone through a lot of clothes changes, haircuts, I've shaved a couple times. But what's been awesome is just how much I've been able to test this. I've been able to grab it, pull it outside for 10 to 15 minutes every few nights or so, and this app has not given me any problems at all except when there's a lot of clouds. And that's obvious because you can't plate solve when there's clouds. So it's just been awesome to, to test this thing out and be able to play with the software, and uh, it, it does a really good job. There's not much else to say. All right, everyone. Well, that is my review of the Celestron StarSense Explorer DX. Really neat product from Celestron here. Obviously the app works really well, gets you up and running almost immediately. So really great product for beginners and, and those that just want to get outside. So thanks so much for watching again. Hope you enjoyed this review. Uh, have a good one and clear skies. As a bonus, if you're a beginner and manuals make you want to rip your hair out, click here for a complete setup of the Celestron StarSense Explorer DX, where I show some tips and tricks to get you running as quickly as possible.